There were 442 completed tests that week, and we didn't overrun our health care capacity, even though there were certainly some close calls as we made it through the year. But a year ago, those moments were the furthest from many of our minds. We were still thinking we would be able to keep doing what we were always doing. And even if our normalcy was about to be interrupted, we couldn't fathom it would last too long, right? Which is why what we were doing those days pre-COVID in Idaho, while at the time didn't stand out to us, well, they certainly do these days. Which is why we wanted to hear about your pre-pandemic memories. What were you doing before it all changed? What was life like before COVID? Well, it was a lot of time together in crowded places. From concerts like Britta at Toby Mac to John Culp checking out Breaking Benjamin in Nampa. Marla Silverman took her daughter to the Morrison Center for her first symphony, where the Boise Philharmonic did Disney songs. Brittany J's son played in a solo and ensemble festival, which sadly became just a solo set for a while. We went to dinner with people outside our household. Lou Brown went with two of his favorite people. Pam Joyce had a celebration dinner with several neighbors inside a house, their last occasion without masks. Marianne Jordan had dinner with friends before our first case of COVID. In about a month, all of them will have been fully vaccinated and they plan to celebrate with, what else? Dinner together. Oh, and hugs. We did birthday parties like Julia Stratton did for her daughter the day before everything shut down. Bobby Mahler had an early surprise birthday party for his 90-year-old dad. Had they waited, it wouldn't have happened. We went to sporting events, indoors, like Mike Eastman did at a Steelheads game. Even outside, where Dan Bixby went to Boise State Baseball's home opener. They wouldn't finish the season, and the program would be suspended. Brian B. was headed to the Roadster Show last year when he heard it was canceled, so they went for a beer instead. And yeah, Brian, it was about to get really weird. People were still traveling to conferences in DC, to Disneyland in LA, to the other LA where the LSU Tigers beat the other Tigers of Clemson for the football national championship. Tom and Mary Ann were in Palm Springs on vacation. Charles Henry went back to France for work and for family. Sadly, it was the last time he would travel for either since. Marsha traveled to Columbia for work in January. She remembers flying home in February and seeing signs in airports about traveling from Wuhan, China. Yeah, people were still dancing, silently, which may not have been normal for Tracy, but still, it was in a room full of strangers. Teresa Crowley was still teaching yoga in Nampa when people were still getting within six feet of each other. She closed her studio, but reopened for virtual classes three days later. We remember doing things with our kids outside of our homes, like Brooke, who took her daughter to the last in-person story time at the library before they closed. Ray walked his daughter down the aisle the weekend before Idaho's lockdown. And a year ago, Michelle Noonan was celebrating her grandson's successful liver transplant and the birth of her granddaughter at the same time. It was also one year ago this week that Sheila saw her great-granddaughter for the first time an hour after she was born in St. Luke's. This week, after being fully vaccinated, exactly one year later, Sheila saw her for the second time as Nova turned one.